Is now a good time, Narina? I have some good news I want to tell you. Oh, hi, Flavio. Good news? What is it? My sister got engaged! Oh, that is quite the good news. So Morella is finally about to get married too, huh? Is she going to marry that guy? He hopes she's going to marry Primo, the guy she's been going out with since high school. He finally paid back all of his student loan and saved up a bit of money, so he says it's about time for them to get married. I see. Now that you mention it, those two have been going out for ten years now, right? It must be quite the milestone for the two of them. To think that they're finally going to get married. Yeah. I mean, Primo is an orphan and was raised in a facility, and he doesn't even have any relatives he can rely on. This must mean so much to him because now he's finally going to officially have family of his own. He said that he didn't want to be a burden financially on Morella. Which is why he didn't propose to her until now when he finally became able to fully support the two of them. He's kind and hardworking, so I'm sure he'll make a great husband. Yep, I hope that's the case for Morella's sake as well. That's not all I wanted to tell you though. Apparently he's going to be visiting my parents' house again to ask for their permission for the marriage. He says he wants you to be there as well since you're my fiancé. Oh, I'm flattered. Could you keep your schedule open for Sunday afternoon? We can go together to our house once we're finished with the meeting for our wedding ceremony. Yep. I'll be more than happy to come. I mean, my family and Primo have already met multiple times, so he's really only going to pay a visit because it's custom, though. There's no way my parents are going to disagree to this marriage. It's fine if he's just going to visit because it's a custom. It's probably his way of starting a new chapter in his life. Yep, I get what you mean. I'll tell you about the details later on. Yep, got it. Hi, Narina. Thanks for coming to our house today. Yep, I had a wonderful time. Looks like the meeting with your parents went peacefully from start to finish, just like you said, huh? Oh, yeah. My parents have always liked Primo. And I wouldn't have expected the meeting with them to go anything but peacefully. Still, though, well... Is there something on your mind? I mean, the wedding ceremony. Huh? The, the wedding ceremony? Oh, he said that he wanted to have a small-scale wedding ceremony with just his friends and family, right? Yes, that's exactly what's bothering me. As Morella's brother, I wanted to have a proper wedding at a wedding venue with a considerable number of people invited. I don't want her wedding and our wedding to be compared by other people in the future, you know? I mean, what they want is a small-scale wedding, right? It's not for us to decide what kind of wedding they're going to have, I think. Besides, it's not like a small-scale wedding is necessarily inferior to a large-scale wedding. What matters the most is what the two of them want. Huh? Don't you think you're being a bit too cold? This is my sister's wedding you're talking about, you know? Really? I mean, I want them to have the best wedding possible as well, but... It's not really me to decide what exactly the best wedding for them is. Don't you think that you want to help my sister out or something? You say that that's the kind of wedding they want to have, but in reality, I'm sure Primo just doesn't have the money to have a large-scale wedding. Um... Sure, Primo was an orphan raised in a facility, but... That doesn't necessarily mean that he's still poor, you know? I mean, it's been several years since he graduated from college and found a job. Besides, I heard that they're going to start making detailed plans for the wedding starting from today. I mean, I think the two of them already have some sort of image for their wedding, and... I heard he told you this, but I don't really think it's for us to decide how their wedding is going to go. The best thing to do would be just to stand by and help them or give them advice when they ask us for it. Yeah, but as Morella's brother, I want her to have the best wedding ceremony possible. Yeah, I get that, but it's not for us to decide what kind of wedding they should have. We're not quite seeing eye to eye right now, but why don't we just stand by and let them do their own thing for now? I don't think getting too involved in their wedding is a good idea. You really need to stop acting like only you know what's best for your sister. She can decide things on her own, you know. What? But I'm sure this is what Morella herself wants as well. She's probably going to say something about how she wants to plan her own wedding and how they want it to be a small-scale one. But in reality, she's probably going to only say that to hide the fact that Primo just doesn't have the money to throw a proper wedding. 
Like I said, I don't think it's a good idea to get that involved. Both Morella and Primo are responsible adults, so I'm sure everything will be fine. All right, I'll think a bit more about this. Narita? Um, I think I'm going to have a problem with this. I'm grateful that you want us to have the best wedding possible, but this is just going too far. What? What's the matter, Mirella? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm talking about the wedding venue. My brother told me that you two were going to hand over the wedding venue you made a reservation for two months ago. And even the wedding dress you guys were going to rent to me and Primo. What? Not only that, but he said that he was going to pay for all the other expenses as well. He said that you can have an even more luxurious wedding than the two of you were originally planning. And that he'd give me an extra 20,000 euros. Huh? 20,000 euros? Me and Primo already have plans for our wedding, so I'm afraid we won't be able to accept this. It's not that we're planning a small-scale wedding because we don't have the money to throw a larger one. But it's partly because Primo doesn't have any family of his own. Don't you think that he'd get a bit lonely if a bunch of my relatives came to my wedding when he has no one like that himself? Wait. Hold on, Morella. You say that you guys only have our best interests in mind, but this is just going too far. We want to plan our own wedding ourselves. Please, try not to get too involved. I wasn't told anything about this. What do you mean we're going to give you our wedding venue and an extra 20,000 euros on top of that? You said your brother Flavio told you this, right? Yes. He not only says that you agreed to it, but he even said that you were the one who proposed it in the first place. But I never agreed to doing anything like that. Heck, he never even told me about it. I was actually trying to stop Flavio because it sounded like he was going to try and get involved in yours and Primo's wedding. Really? I think of you like my own sister, Morella, but I wouldn't go so far as to give you my own wedding ceremony. I... I see. I mean, that's only going to cause you guys trouble, right? To tell you the truth, it will... I see, so this was all my brother's doing. I guess if you think about this a bit more carefully, you're not the kind of person that would do something like that, huh? Sorry, I just panicked when Flavio told me this and assumed that this was your idea. Sorry for getting all mad at you. I was so surprised when my brother suddenly came to me and told me about how he was going to give the wedding ceremony that was supposed to be yours to us. I tried to refuse, but he kept insisting. He even said something about how I didn't have to hide the fact that I actually wanted to have a proper wedding because he's my brother or something. I see. Flavia was always the kind of person that wouldn't take no for an answer. Yep. He often comes up with these plans on his own that he thinks are a good idea and sets it into motion without telling anyone else. But more often than not, it only just causes the people around him trouble. It looks like this is one of those again. Yeah, and at times like these, I tried to stop him from doing anything before he can even start. But it seems that this time he messed up real big since it was your wedding, a major event in your life that was on the line. Sorry, you must have been really surprised when he told you all of this, right? No, don't apologize. You did nothing wrong, Narina. I'm the one who should apologize to you for my brother's actions. Anyways, I think I'm going to have to talk to Flavio about this. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry we had to make you go through this trouble. Norita? Did you already confront my brother about giving us your wedding? No, I haven't yet, actually. Sorry, but could you wait a bit longer? I contacted Primo just now, and he's saying it's completely unbelievable. I'm sorry to say this, but I think this is even worse than we initially thought. Huh? Y you contacted Primo? What did he tell you? I know this is really sudden, but could me and Primo visit you in person right now? I'm pretty sure we're going to have to give you an apology, so I want to talk to you in person. That's fine with me, but... Thanks. I'm really sorry, but I'll tell you about it when we get there. We're going to be there in an hour. Got it.
Arena! There's something I want to tell you. We're gonna give our wedding... You were going to give our wedding to Marilla and Primo, right? Oh, you already heard about it from her. We're gonna give them our wedding, and not only that, but I want it to be even more luxurious than we originally planned. Which means I'll need you to give them an extra 20,000 euros. <laughs> the two of them don't want you to do this, so could you just stop? Wait, hold on. Why am I the one that's going to give them 20,000 euros? You're the one who came up with this. Not that I'm agreeing to give them the wedding ceremony that was supposed to be ours, though. Huh? What do you mean they don't want me to do this? Why wouldn't they want me to do this? I mean, you and Marilla have similar body structure, so you should be able to use the wedding dress that was supposed to be yours as well. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm trying to say that Marilla and Primo don't want you to give them our wedding ceremony in the first place. Marilla and Primo came to me yesterday to ask me to do something about this. Apparently, you told them that I was the one who came up with the idea of giving them our wedding? Well, um, I thought that it would mean more to them if they thought that you were the one who came up with this, and not me. Huh? I think you made this mean a bit too much to them, and not in a good way. Yeah, but uh, think about this more carefully. Marilla's future husband is someone who can only throw a small-scale wedding because he's too poor. Huh? What made you think Primo was poor? Sure, he may have been poor growing up since he was an orphan, but it's already been several years since he graduated college and got a job. Use your head a bit more, Flavio. Huh? But of course he's still poor. That's how the world works, Narina. I mean, he was so poor that he had to take on a student loan to go to college. Morella was kind enough to ignore that fact and accepted Primo despite his poverty. Don't you think that it's only natural for me, then, to want to help them in any possible way? I'm doing this for my adorable little sister, so don't get all selfish, all right? How exactly am I being selfish? You're the only one who is just assuming that Primo is poor and making a big deal out of it. Everyone else is rolling their eyes at you right now. Do you not even notice that? No one thinks that giving Morella and Primo our wedding ceremony is a good idea except you. Yeah, but I already set this plan into motion, so there's no point trying to argue anymore. <laughs> I already told the wedding venue that we were going to cancel our wedding ceremony, but to still make us pay for it. I told them that my sister was going to throw our wedding ceremony there instead of us. Huh? You what? Um, does that mean that you canceled our marriage without even telling me anything about it? Come on, Narina. You make it sound like I did something bad. All I did was make sure that my sister would be able to have the kind of wedding ceremony she actually wanted. Me and you can just postpone our wedding ceremony and have it when we save up some money again. Primo, on the other hand, won't be able to do the same because he's so poor. Are you seriously still saying that? Besides, did you forget that we already sent everyone wedding invitations? Oh, that's right. Thanks for reminding me. Could you tell everyone we sent the wedding invitation to about the situation? Huh? Why are you making me do everything when this was your idea? Do it yourself! And do you seriously think that you can get away with just telling everyone that our wedding ceremony is going to be cancelled? We're not cancelling it. We're just going to postpone it. I mean, all you have to do is tell them that our wedding ceremony is going to be postponed. What's so difficult about that? Is that so? So that's your stance. Fine. I don't care. Nice. Well, I just texted you to tell you that we were going to give Morella and Primo our wedding. So that's it, I guess. All right, but in exchange for that, I'm going to be asking for an alimony. Huh? An alimony? For what? I don't want to marry you anymore. I just can't keep up with all your crazy antics. Huh? What are you suddenly saying, Arena? Hey, what do you mean you're going to cancel our marriage? Is this why he said you're going to ask me for an alimony? Are you seriously that mad that we had to postpone our wedding ceremony? There are a lot of things I want to tell you, but since now I know about your real intentions, I no longer want to marry you. That's all there is to it. Huh? If that's the case, then you're the one who should be paying me an alimony. The person who proposed the marriage cancellation should be the one to pay. 
You're cheating on me with a woman named Lucia, right? Huh? I don't know who you're talking about. I heard that Lucia works for Primo at his company. Uh, Primo is Luisa's boss? You idiot. Do you realize you just admitted to cheating on me? Well, not that it matters, I guess, since I already have proof. You see, apparently Primo saw you and Lucia holding hands while entering a love hotel several times while he was on his way home from work. He didn't want to jump to any conclusions, so he first asked one of the other female employees to do some investigation for him. But apparently the two of you met at a party and that you two were going out on the basis of eventually getting married? Not only that, but apparently she was pregnant with your child and she was planning on telling the company about it soon. No, that's not true. Me and Louisa aren't going out. We're just friends, you see. <laughs> just stop trying to deny it already. There's no point. Anyways, I heard that soon after Primo found out about this, you started talking about how you were going to give our wedding to him and Morella. In Primo's own words, the woman he was cheating on you with became pregnant, and so he needed to buy time to decide which one of you he was going to marry. He probably just wanted a reason to cancel your wedding ceremony and used me being poor as an excuse. Not only that, but he said that you asking me to pay 20,000 euros was another tactic to distract me from the truth and buy time. This is the hypothesis that Primo came up with, and I'm pretty sure what he's saying is spot on. So was he correct? Um... Oh, and I forgot to tell you, but I also met with this Lucia as well. You met her? Yeah, I thought that I had seen her somewhere before, and apparently she was an underclassman at the college I went to. Uh... Apparently she asked you out, but you refused, since you were planning on asking me out instead. Ever since then, she's been seeing me as her enemy, it seems. Her parents got divorced and her last name changed, which is why I didn't notice it was her until I actually met her in person. What? The two of you knew each other? Damn it, I should have realized. I think I already told you enough for you to guess where this is going. Apparently, Louisa got pregnant on purpose while knowing I was your fiancé. She was planning on stealing you from me from the start. Huh? She says that she's sorry for stealing your boyfriend. It looks like you were being targeted from the beginning. What a scary woman this Louisa of yours is. Um, this has to be a joke, right? No, it isn't. Well, that's all I had to say to you. I'm canceling the marriage and I'm going to make you two pay me an alimony. Wait, hold on. Please contact me through my lawyer from now on. Your lawyer? Well then, goodbye. This and that happened, but eventually the marriage between me and Flavia was successfully cancelled. Not only did I make him pay an alimony, but I also made him pay for all of the wedding ceremony's cancellation fees. Of course, I made Luisa pay me an alimony as well, just like I said I would. They were a bit uncooperative at the start, but I was successfully able to make them pay the alimonies up front. After that, it seems that Luisa and Flavio got married, but it was only then that Flavio's hell truly began. First of all, everyone in his company eventually found out about why his marriage was cancelled and talked about it behind his back, giving him cold looks everywhere he went. But since he had to earn enough money for his wife and soon-to-be-born child, he couldn't resign. When he goes home, his new, now fully mentally unstable wife would check all his stuff and even his smartphone to make sure that he wasn't cheating on her. Not only that, but naturally all of his siblings and his parents cut ties with him. Apparently, the two of them started going bald out of stress. I haven't told anyone about this, but I think that was the final piece of karma that came to them for doing what they did. Yo! Chris, you happen to work for Jarvis, right? Um, is that you, Parker? It's been a very long time, right? The last time you and I saw each other was maybe five years ago at that class reunion? Yo, answer the dang question for me. You happen to work for the company Jarvis now, right? That's right. I started to work for Jarvis around three years ago when I changed over to this company. As of right now, I'm working in the sales department. Hmm? 
I've worked with Jarvis in their sales department before plenty of times, but I never once noticed that you were there with them. Ah, I see. You're working for Cadillac's commercial affairs team now, right? I happen to just become the manager for all of our work with Cadillac recently. Oh? You're the one in charge now? This all happened for me so fast, with the promotion and such. But the last manager ended up leaving his job for a few reasons that I'm not aware of. I'm sure that you'd recognize that manager if you saw him, since I'm sure you ran into him a couple of times then. Yeah, probably. Well, I can see that you're doing alright for yourself now then. And that's where you're working now. Well, I'm glad that we were both able to catch up. See ya! Ah, right. See you again sometime. Three months later. Parker? Do you have some time to chat with me? Huh? When I'm over at Cadillac trying to deal with some important work, do you mind not putting me in headlocks all the time? Or coming up behind me and hitting me in the back? Yo, Chris. You need to start calling me Mr. Parker from now on. I'm the one who has a position above your own now. Don't you dare think you can call me by my name without adding some form of a formality to it, you lowlife. What are you talking about? Jarvis and Cadillac don't have that kind of connection with one another. No. I'm the leader of the team that deals with you guys now. And I've decided that I can do whatever I want when it comes to all of you. Um, you became the leader? And... If you were just to take a look at the size of this company compared to Jarvis, you'd know better than to think you were on the same level as me. No matter what you try and say, Cadillac is seen as the company on top of Jarvis. So all you guys are over there is a contractor to us. I don't believe either one of the companies we work for had that kind of relationship with the other, actually. Hey, you need to be more formal with me. You'd better start thinking of how to talk to me like I'm your boss. Um... Well, anyway, what I'm wanting to talk with you about is related to our work, so can you please stop speaking such nonsense to me? Huh? What did you just say to me? You've always kind of been this way to me, ever since middle school. And not just me, I suppose, but to everyone you're ever around. You forget to think about how others feel about you, and will do anything and everything for yourself without a bother in the world. Back in middle school, you happened to make a lot of trouble for one of the teachers who was pregnant at the time and got kicked out of her class. And there were plenty of other times there as well where you had to go to detention for being rude and obnoxious to everyone else. You even ended up being suspended that one time for causing a scene in the lunchroom by pushing someone else over while they were carrying your lunch tray. I guess you really never learned that from suspension anyway, so it was probably better to take another approach to trying to make you behave, but... Anyway, have you still not noticed that your kind of nonchalant behavior about everything is not helpful to those around you? Huh? Who gives a crap about everyone around me? Because I feel that they have a problem, they can bring it up with me. I'm sure back in school that kind of thought process worked out for you. But we're adults now working in two very large companies. You contractors and your preaching always takes way too long. I told you that I'm not a contractor to your company. I understand that you and I have history all the way back to middle school. But at the moment, all we are to one another is business partners. Or, well customers. In other words, I'd like it if things between us remain that way and you stop it with all the horseplay when I come over to the office. Especially right now when both of our companies are starting to make some big decisions between one another and need to be serious. <laughs> Alrighty then. I'll be more careful around you. The next day. Oh. Chris, you've made it. Just like that other man that was working as the manager for relations between my company and yours, you happen to give a good meeting about those plans there. But listen, bud. What the hell do you think you're doing bringing plans up like that to my company when you're just a contractor to us? <laughs> Are you trying to make a point there? Ah, I see. I'm betting you thought that to prove that both of our jobs are equal to one another, you decided to bring in those plans and make a whole meeting up about them to show everyone here you're more than a contractor. Well, it's because of thinking like that, that I'll never be able to take you low-life contractors seriously over here. Alright, this is my chance to make a move. 
I'm going to help you understand just the position a manager like you is really in, Mr. Contractor. I hope you're looking forward to this, because I sure am. <laughs> 20 minutes later. Parker, give me back those plans and proposals. I'm planning to use all of those again for today's meeting. Also, what the heck are you thinking taking that SD card from me that had all those papers downloaded on them for safekeeping? If I don't have any of those by the time of the meeting, I won't be able to have it. Do you have any idea what the heck you're doing right now? Yo, I took a quick read over all those plans and proposals you have here. Hmm, I don't think any of these will do to be honest with you. They're being rejected. Huh? This is something I've been wanting to tell you for a while now. For a contractor like you to be bringing proposals like that to a company is a freaking joke. Some bullcrap like this that's been thought up by a low-life contractor like you is only good for one thing. Fuel for my fire. <laughs> huh? Are you going to burn all of that? Actually, the fire's already going. Everything's in there. I'm sure you're not going to be needing this SD card anymore either, right? Well, I just stomped on it for you, so you don't need to answer that. That whole feeling of superiority you had there is all gone now, right? <laughs> Parker! Now that I'm the new leader for the team dealing with you and that company, I'm going to make sure you all understand just what kind of company you're all working for now. Do you have a single clue what the hell you've just done, Parker? I told you exactly what I've done. I destroyed it all. Because ideas coming from contractors like you mean nothing to me and my team, nor this whole entire company. I worked very hard to snatch all those papers from you, as well as that SD card today in order to remind you what kind of position you're really in. The leader of that team is still Justin, as I recall. Well, starting today, Justin is no longer leading the team. And in his place, I stand. <laughs> Well, I was never officially told any sort of news like that from any higher ups, nor yours. And actually, as we speak, my company is on the line with yours asking who is in charge of that team. Huh? To me, it seems that you have been causing a lot of problems for Justin and the team there. And from today, are you trying to act as though you're in charge now, right? I'm sure you're just doing all that to make me feel worried and upset, or something needless like that. What are you getting at here? I was just doing my job for this company by making sure idiot contractors like you don't get the wrong idea and think it's okay to be making proposals for this company. If anything, I'd really like a thank you from you right now for helping both companies out. Parker. I had thought you knew about my position in Jarvis and the relation we have with Cadillac, but I guess you really don't have a single clue. Huh? I'm sure I shouldn't be having to say something like this to you right now. But listen here, Parker. Those plans and proposals that you just burnt up and smashed on the floor happen to not only be thought up by my company. What? Those proposals that were given to us came from your team's leader, Justin. And he had asked for us to brush them up a little here. Also, that by the time we put them into action, there would be no faults anywhere. And as for some final work that was being put into all those proposals and plans, I had created a PowerPoint on that SD card to give it the meeting showcasing what we had done and where we planned to go with everything. Huh? As for today, during that joint meeting we'll be having, there will be both the CEO from Cadillac and the CEO from Jarvis there to see what ideas we have ready. And not just them, but also other customers that both our companies will be there watching. What did you just say? It will only be a matter of time before everyone begins to show up for that meeting. All to see what we've thought up to help both companies work together even closer from here on out. But after what you've done, I'm sure you can guess what will happen to you now, right? Um, wait a second. Luckily that SD card and those papers have all been backed up to another hard drive back at Jarvis. So I can go back there to retrieve all that information as long as the meeting has moved to another date, or later this evening. So I'm not so worried about having that meeting or not. 
what I'm worried about is your behavior and the actions you took today in the order to try and get me to kneel to you. At this point in time, all of Cadillac is in a panic trying to find out what's happened to you and what you did with all the proposals we had. Whoa! I'm sure that the smartphone you're texting me with right now is also being blown up by all your co-workers and bosses, right? Do you think it's going to help you in the future to ignore all of them right now? Uh, no, wait. I just assumed that after dealing with you, I could get right back to work and talk with them all then. I'd say your best bet now is to start answering to all of them and come back to the office to answer for what you've done. You really need to be made aware of the severity of all you've just done. And the only way that'll happen is if you come back here and face the consequences. The next day. Chris! Do something about all of this for me! What do you want from me? Right now my uncle is completely pissed at me. If things keep escalating like they have been, I might end up getting fired from my job here. That's right. You so happen to be the nephew of one of the directors within Cadillac, and that's the whole reason you were even able to get a job there in the first place, right? So far, your uncle's apologized for all your actions there many times over. Huh? He's apologized for me? Have you finally come to an understanding of the predicament you're in right now? No way! I was finally able to get a decent job at a company like this, and have been racking in even more money than I ever imagined I'd be able to. Because of my connection to my uncle, I was even able to get a raise in everything. And the job has been so simple for me that I barely feel as though I'm working at all when I'm here. I don't want to be thrown out of a job that's as easy as this one. Well, what would it mean to you if that uncle of yours is no longer a director there? What? Due to all the trouble you've caused this time by ruining the meeting we were supposed to have, and almost destroying all the work Jarvis and Cadillac had worked for, your uncle had to really step in and take responsibility for you. Huh? Are you kidding me? And, well, this was the last straw for the company and your uncle, so they terminated him already. One other thing. That leader, Justin, that you've been trying to take the spot of forcefully, happens to be the grandson of your CEO. Are you freaking kidding me? The rest of this is probably things I shouldn't really be talking about with you. But you have to understand that you're acting like a spoiled brat that thinks they can get away with anything within that company. It's not acceptable by any means, right? No. No. This is all a lie. I was just wanting to make the workplace more lively, and that's why I did a bunch of things like that to spice things up a bit. And when I started to work on the team dealing with you and that company, I hated to think that some contractor like you would have the balls to try preaching to me like that. Hmm. That's not a good way of thinking about Cadillac and Jarvis's partnership. Really shows just how horrible of a person you really are, Parker. What? You have not grown up one bit since we first met back in middle school, and that's just sad. If anything... You've only gone backwards in terms of personal growth, and it's felt like I've been dealing with a preschooler when I'm around you here. What the hell did you say? I'm sorry, but I have a meeting to get to now. Huh? Why do you have to go to a meeting all of a sudden? Well, due to your outburst yesterday, along with your actions, the meeting between both our companies had to be delayed until today. For crying out loud! Don't you dare leave me with no help when I'm about to lose my job! You were the one that ruined the gift your uncle had given you by getting you into that company. Why do I have to be the one blamed for all that? You understand the phrase, you'll get what's coming for you? What? Other than the things I've just said to you, there's nothing else I'd like to talk with you about. I'll be going now. Frick! After that, as you just saw, I was able to hold that meeting with the rest of my group and Cadillac's team, and it all went over really well for everyone. But, while that was taking place, Parker went ahead and did something far worse. It appears that he was really in love with the woman working the front desk of the office building, 
and he refused to stay home from work while the company performed its investigation into him. He came into the building with a bouquet of roses for her, and he proposed to her in the lobby of the building. He totally had the confidence to think that she'd never say no to him, but she told him a swift no, and he began to throw a fit in the lobby, which ended up with him being taken into custody by police. And with that, the CEO came down to him before the police took him away and told him he was fired. Both of Parker's parents told him to never come around them as they disowned him, and he no longer was able to get into contact with any other members of his family. He also had a restraining order put on him by the girl at the front desk. Parker could no longer handle all the holes that he was continuing to put himself into, and one day he had one last hurrah on the subway drinking loads of alcohol and making a complete mess of himself. He was taken back into custody by police, however this time he wouldn't be lucky enough to escape the court system. I'm not sure how long he'll be locked up for, but I hope that he keeps acting up in there so that he has to stay longer. As there is no way anyone wants a menace like him back on the streets causing problems for the public. Cheryl, you're the worst. I made a huge mistake living anywhere close to you. If only I made it more clear to Logan before that I wanted to live closer to my parents, you would never be around us. Good evening, Isabel. What has gotten into you this time? What have I done to you that is so bad? Can you please explain that to me before we get any further with this? You went out and made a duplicate key of our house's key without ever asking me first. And then you used that key to get into our house without being invited. Huh? While me and your son have been out of the house, you have been coming in and doing as you please. If that isn't you trying to mess with me, then I don't know who is. But there isn't anybody else close by to us who would want to mess with me, so it has to be you. I have only been married to your son for two weeks now, and you're already going to start picking on me? You are the worst person ever. Can you calm down a little bit first? Tell me, when did all of this happen? Why do you think that I'm the one that made a duplicate key for your house and have been going in there uninvited while you guys are out of the house? Why are you trying to play dumb with me? This all happened just today. I'm not sure why you come over here all the time and what you're trying to do, but every time we go out, we come home to things in our room and the living room being misplaced. Things like this can only be done by one person, and that's you. We all know it. Well, all day today, I've been downtown at work. Huh? My normal week consists of me having to work Monday through Friday and having the weekends off. I get plenty of holidays as well, and sometimes I'm asked to travel out of state for work. That's the kind of schedule I have working for this company. I thought that you were just a part-timer. No, I'm working full-time, actually, and my time in the office is usually from 8 to 4. And today was no different, as I had to be into work by 8, and then I wasn't home until around 5. And I only get around an hour for lunch, which isn't enough time for me to come all the way to your guys' house and do anything there. Huh? Trying your hardest to blame someone without any evidence is not okay, Isabel. Next time, I'd like you to be a bit more careful, okay? Cheryl, what is wrong with you? Isabel, what is it today? The food that I made for dinner today. You came in and threw it in the trash on purpose. That is so messed up of you. Can you please explain to me what happened this time that makes you think it was me? I'm talking about what you did during the day today. I know that you were waiting for us to be out of the house and then came inside with that duplicate key to go through our fridge. And the food that I made for us to have for dinner today was all sitting in the trash can outside. You threw it all away, didn't you? So this happened today, huh? Today is a Saturday, so you can't try and use being at work as an excuse on me. I bet you're the kind of wife that thinks it's okay to serve up frozen dishes to your family. And when you heard about me making my own fresh dishes for your son, you became jealous and wanted to have a reason for tossing it in the trash. I bet you're going to tell me that it tasted bad, and that'll be your excuse this time. You are the frickin' worst. Well, I'll have you know, Isabel, that since yesterday evening, I've been out of the state and have been on my way to Colorado for a conference. Huh? I actually had to leave right after work yesterday, so I haven't been home for the last 36 hours or so. And I've been out of town for the last 24 hours or so on my way to the conference. So I'm sorry to say this, but I haven't had the time to come over to your place to do that today, nor have I even been in the same state. Huh? I'm sure that you thought because today was Saturday I wouldn't have work and could have come over to your house. 
but I'm not in town right now, so you cannot keep trying to blame me for whatever happened to that food you cooked up for dinner. Um, is that so? If you're so worried about having someone coming into your home all the time and doing these things, then maybe put up some security cameras. Then you should be able to catch the person responsible. Now I'll be going. Mom, do you have a second? How's it going, Logan? Well, I have something to ask you. What's up? I feel that a couple of days ago, you may have been contacted by Isabel about something having happened to the food she had made for dinner that night. You're talking about last Saturday, right? She did, in fact, text me about something to do with her food. But what's happened now since then? Once again, her cooking was tossed in the trash today. Seriously? And once again, she's back at it trying to blame you for doing this to her. She's telling me that last time you did a good job running away from her. But she knows that when we're out of the house, you come inside and taste her cooking to see if it's good enough for me or not. She still thinks it's me. Well, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm out of the state again today. Wait, is that true? Just after getting back from Colorado over the weekend, the company had me sent back out to another conference, but this time in Wyoming. There have been a lot of things going on within the company's world, and so I've been out of the state since last Friday and probably won't be home until this Friday. What about Dad? Ever since he retired from his job, he's been home quite a lot, right? Well, your dad told me that since I'm not around the house for a whole week, that he's back in New York at his dad's house helping take care of him while he visits. And he won't be coming back home until the day after I get back from Wyoming, which will be this Saturday. So in other words, neither you or dad have been in town since last Friday then? That's right. I see. All right then. So you said that you'll be back in town by Friday, right? Well, as long as there isn't any place else I have to go after here. So in another two days... All right, take a little time to rest and think about all of this. So I'll get in touch with you again later. If you have any more questions after this, you can feel free to ask me anytime. Thank you. I'll see you later. <coughs> oh my. Oh my. Cheryl? It seems that I ended up in a pretty awkward spot just a second ago and saw some things. I just saw the two of you run off in a panic outside and I just wanted to know if everything was okay there. I hope that the two of you are being careful right now, since you're out in public in the nude. Wh why Why have you come all the way home already? From what I heard from Logan, you're not supposed to be back in town until Friday. Which means you shouldn't be home until tomorrow, right? Why are you home so early? Well, that conference that I went to ended up ending earlier than expected, so I was able to come back home a day earlier. But, Isabel, I want to ask you... Why have you been over at my house all day without me around, relaxing and treating the place as if it's your own? And not just relaxing, but fooling around with a man I've never seen before. You do realize that this house is the home of your husband's mother and father, right? And you have been in it while we've been gone doing what, exactly? I... I have... This is unacceptable, Isabel. You have been blaming me for so long for picking on you and coming into your house while you've been out. But from what I've seen, you've been waiting for the right time when my husband and I are gone to come into our home uninvited. What the hell were you thinking? <laughs> Mom! What happened to Isabel? Oh my, so it seems that you finally made it back home from work then? I want to know what's happening with you guys. When I tried speaking with Isabel about you guys, she started to freeze up and not want to talk to me anymore. And as of right now, she's locked herself in our room and won't come out to talk to me. My, oh my. I wonder if I went a little too far. <laughs> I'm being very serious about this right now, Mom. When I got home, I saw that her clothes were thrown all over the place. And they're wet? Right. She must have found some place outside to get changed back into her clothes then before making it back to your place. What the hell are you talking about? I don't really want to think about what she could have done, but if you really have been picking on her, and this is another part of it, I might have to say goodbye to you forever, Mom. Logan, I know that it's your job as her husband to trust everything she says and does around you, but I just want you to know if you have it in yourself to doubt her for one second and have the will to look deeper into what she's been doing, really start to think about if she's a trustworthy wife after all. So to start, please look around and see if you can find anything about her that's not quite right. Huh? 
What? Is there actually something going on that I don't know about? There is, unfortunately. There's something about her you should be doubtful of. I think you need to seriously start rethinking your relationship with her and question her loyalty to you. Huh? Logan, can you come over to my house right away? I know that this might not be the best time for you, but I have some things here that I'd like to tell and show you that might help you better understand what's been going on with her. All right. Mom, I'm not really sure what to say about all of this, but for starters, I want to say thank you. And when you showed me the image of that man she's been with, I felt like I knew him. And now it's come back to me that he's in fact her ex-boyfriend. That's right. Isabel's ex. I'm going to take a second look further into him and see what I can find out. If you have anything else you need help with, just ask. Sounds good. I'm sure I'll need your help again very soon. for me to divorce him right now. Oh my. Perhaps I should be explaining this to you a bit more so that you have a better understanding of why this is. Well, I shouldn't have to explain anything to you because you should be well aware of what you did to cause all this. Well, but ever since that happened, Logan hasn't said anything to me about it. And actually, I thought as my husband, he would have believed what I was saying about you over what you said to him. If only you would have come back on the day you told us you'd be back, none of this would ever be happening to me. And had you just listened to what I had told you, you would have never had to try to blame me for picking on you all those times when someone else was in your house. But now that I think about it, you were only blaming me so that Logan would look away from you cheating on him and be focused on trying to get answers from me. What? To put it this way, I'm sure that you've been giving that man that you've been sleeping with a duplicate key to your house and that he's been the one going in there and messing around. But you've wanted to keep that fact hidden from Logan, so you blame me for it trying to get Logan to think the same thing. But remember, I have rock-solid evidence of me not being in town or being at work whenever you accuse me of being the one in your house. So Logan never has a reason to doubt me and has only had further reason to doubt you. Um, what? You know what I'm talking about, Isabel. And even if you say you don't, we all know what's been happening, and that you are the only one that none of us can trust. I'm sure that those times you blamed me for throwing away your dishes, it's been really the man you sleep with eating them whenever he comes over to fool around with you. And you do your best to hide that from Logan by making up a quick dish before he comes home from work. What's funny, though, is the last time you tried blaming me, it wasn't your cooking that your secret man ate, but the cooking that Logan had prepared in advance for dinner that he ate. That time, you had no idea what the recipe was for Logan's meal, and so you had no way of covering up what had happened, right? Uh, I didn't actually think that Logan could ever cook like that. And that's why things began to fall apart really badly with your lies because you said that I threw away the dish you cooked, even though that time it was Logan's dish. But it's not like it would have mattered anyway, considering that even if it was your cooking and you tried to blame me for it, I still had evidence that I was not in town and not even in the state during that time. Uh, why were you not around during that time? Stop trying to complain about me, please. The only person you should be complaining about now is yourself. But even after everything I've said and about what's going to happen to you, you still seem to not want to apologize for it. What are you trying to say? It's already a very bad thing that you've been cheating on my son with another man, but the fact that while I've been gone out of state, as well as while my husband's been gone out of state, you took the duplicate key to my house from Logan, and you went into my house uninvited to finally have a place where you could make love to this unknown man without there being anyone around the place to see you. But right as you both got heated up in my house, I came back home a day earlier than expected. And it's because of me being home early that I was able to see you on top of that man on my couch right as I walked in through the front door. And as soon as you both saw me come in, you both bolted out the house with your clothes in hand and fully naked. Ah. Uh... Honestly, you are such a freaking whore, you. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Right now, I'm so worried about everything that's going on now that I can't even think straight enough to try and lie about what happened. I'm sure that after seeing how Logan wants to leave you now, you're starting to realize there is no way out of this now? Well, I don't want to get a divorce, though. 
He's even telling me that he's going to get a settlement from me now. I know that he's going to be allowed to get that settlement because he has so many reasons to get it from me. Yeah, that's right. Ah, and by the way, as for you breaking into my house uninvited, as well as you having sex on my bed, all the furniture, and eating a lot of the food in my house, I'm going to be asking for around 15000 from you and your secret partner to pay for me to get brand new furniture and restock my fridge and wine cellar. 15000 You have to understand that my furniture was not cheap. And the bed, especially. It was specially crafted for my husband and I since we both have trouble sleeping and he has a bad back that requires a very high-quality mattress. It was so nice finally being able to get that mattress and all the nice bedding a year ago, and now it's been ruined by you. I'm so upset. It really did feel amazing having sex on that bed. And now I know why. You must have been going at it with him for a long time. And I can tell that by how wrinkled all the bedding is, even after a few days. But I've thrown all the bedding out now, and we will have to wait a whole week for any new furniture and bedding to arrive. Now, with all of that... Huh? Isabel, I'm aware that you don't have a good standing with your parents right now and might not be able to go home to them. Well, I think Logan and I are going to do the same thing and cut ties with you and never let you in our lives again. So please, hurry up and sign those divorce documents and then pay whatever needs to be paid by you. Wait! Right now I'm not working a job and I don't have the money to pay. What should I do? Well, if you're in a pickle, think about how to get out of it yourself. But I'm saying that I don't know what to do right now. I'm going now. What? For crying out loud, I'm, I'm asking you to help me, Cheryl. <laughs> After that, all of the messages from Isabel began to really get on my nerves. And as for my son, who was back living with us at our house for a while, his phone was the same, being blown up by messages from her. So to stop her from ever causing us any sort of annoyance ever again, we both blocked her number. Following that, we also worked on selling the house that Logan was living in with her, since it had been spoiled by her and her secret man. Logan was also able to get a decent settlement from her not too long after selling the place, and was able to then move out of our house and into a new place on his own. And as for me, I was also able to get that 15000 I had asked for and was able to get all new furniture and bedding. Things had finally calmed down for all of us after that bumpy road with Isabel, but the same cannot be said for her. For starters, her and that secret man ended up having multiple fights about money and everything and ended up breaking up. This also meant she could not stay in his small apartment any longer and was forced onto the street, where she now calls home and has to make do and we found out that the only way she was able to pay my son and I the money we asked for was through her parents, who already didn't like her. So after receiving their generosity like that, she was forced to start working day and night to pay them back all that money she took from them by the end of the year. But of course, the end of the year is only two months away now, and so for her to be able to pay all of that money back to her parents, she might really need to step up the pace and just forget about ever having free time, or time to sleep. <laughs> Thank you for watching and listening. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave a comment about what you thought of the story. We look forward to seeing you at the next story. Hi, Cecira. We haven't talked to each other since we graduated from high school, right? So this makes it nine years, I guess. Are you still enjoying that life of poverty? <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to talk to you about the wedding invitation I sent you recently. You know, the one I sent you by email since I didn't know your new address. Could you hurry up and send me your reply already? Or is it that you're worried whether you'll be able to pay for the trip to the wedding venue because you're so poor? <laughs> Looks like you haven't changed, Cecira. Long time no see, Rosa. Ah, so you're still doing that running joke of yours where you set me up as being poor and make fun of me for it. Huh? What do you mean my running joke? But you are actually poor, right? <laughs> I've been telling you this since we were in elementary school, but my family isn't as poor as you make us out to be. Huh? Listen up. Your family is poor and my family is rich. You see, you call someone like me who lives in a mansion and is the daughter of a CEO rich, and you call someone like you who lives in a tiny 2DK apartment poor. <laughs> do you understand that? Sure, you may be able to barely get by, but you're poor compared to me, all right? 
Um, but it doesn't make sense to judge how rich or poor someone is based on the size of the house they live in. Just because someone doesn't live in a luxurious house doesn't mean that they're poor, you know? Besides, I already told you why my family lived in a 2DK apartment instead of a house when we were kids, right? Oh, yeah, it was something about how your father was the eldest son of his family and that he would eventually inherit his parents' house, right? There was tension between your mother and her mother-in-law, so you guys decided to live separately from her for the time being, or something? Yes, we now live in that house, the one my father inherited after his parents passed away. Yeah, yeah, I get it already. <laughs> Even if a poor person inherits a house that belonged to a poor person, it doesn't change the fact that they're still poor. <laughs> it's basically the same thing from my perspective. <laughs> so you don't actually understand, huh? Anyways, we got off topic. I was talking about the wedding invitation I sent you by email. I need you to send me your reply as soon as possible. Oh, you were getting married, right? I was about to contact you about that wedding invitation myself, so this was good timing. Huh? What do you mean you were going to contact me about it? Why not just reply to my email? You see, for some reason I got multiple wedding invitations for your wedding. Huh? Yeah, I received two. One from your husband and one from you. What? Really? The other wedding invitation was for both me and my husband to come, but yours was just for me. Wait, you were married? Yeah, I just got married last year. But you never invited me to your wedding. Sorry, but only family was invited to our wedding ceremony. Oh, I get it. <laughs> you were too poor that you could only throw a small-scale wedding, huh? Unlike me, who's going to throw a grand wedding that's going to cost over 100,000 euros. <laughs> um, it wasn't really a financial decision, but... Oh, wait, but your last name didn't change. It did. I just didn't tell you about it yet. Hmm? I'm sorry, but I'll have to delete the wedding invitation you sent me and reply to the one inviting both me and my husband instead. It would be weird if the two of us went to the wedding with separate invitations, right? Well, I guess it can't be helped. I guess it was bad management that we accidentally sent you two wedding invitations. It doesn't matter, though, because you're still going to be coming to the wedding, right? It's fine as long as that's the case. Yep, thanks for understanding. All right, I'm going to reply to this other wedding invitation inviting me and my husband instead of yours. I'll make sure to reply by the end of this week. Yeah, all right. Hi, Cecira. Have you arrived to the wedding venue yet? I don't think you would do something like this, but don't tell me that you suddenly changed your plans, did you? No, I haven't changed my plans. I'm currently on my way to the wedding venue. Okay. Oh, that reminds me. We're going to be serving luxurious food, the kind you probably are too poor to eat often, at the wedding reception, but I am begging you, try not to stuff your face with it, all right? <laughs> oh, and I don't think I need to tell you this, but taking it home also isn't allowed. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. You see, I had a mentor teach me basic manners when I was younger. Huh? A mentor? <laughs> Are you trying to show off? <laughs> There's no way someone as poor as you would be able to take lessons on manners. <laughs> Only people who belong to the upper class like me receive lessons on manners. Just imagining you at such a place makes me laugh. <laughs> I already told you this multiple times. My family isn't as poor as you're making us out to be. Yeah, yeah, you're poor compared to me at least. By the way, you're probably worried about the wedding gift that you're going to have to give us, right? This is a wedding thrown by rich people, after all. But since I'm not just rich, but kind as well, I'll let you give me only one cent as a wedding gift. <laughs> huh? I'm not so selfish as to make a poor person pay me money. I really won't mind even if you give me only one cent. You see, my husband is also extremely rich, which means that this is kind of a celebrity marriage. Most of the other people here are also from the upper class, so we're just going to receive the wedding gift money from them instead. I see, but I really don't mind giving you a regular-sized wedding gift. No need to act all proud, Cecira. It's not your fault that you and your husband are poor after all. 
Anyways, the wedding ceremony today is probably going to be so luxurious that you probably have never even dreamed of anything like it before. But don't get all snotty when you get here just because you're jealous of my money, all right? Just try not to look like a complete idiot. <laughs> I arrived at the wedding venue's parking lot, so I'll talk to you later. Oh, so you finally arrived? Look forward to the wedding reception, all right? I've got a surprise for you. <laughs> Hi, Rosa. Can we talk right now? It's about me and my husband's seat at the wedding reception. What's the meaning of this placement? Oh, you finally noticed. It's a pretty hilarious seating plan, don't you think? <laughs> it's not just that you didn't prepare seats for us, but it says that we're supposed to stand by the walls. Is this some kind of a joke? How did you even convince the wedding planners to let you do this? <laughs> How I convinced them to do this is none of your business. You see, I thought it would be embarrassing for you two if I didn't give you positions at the wedding reception befitting of a poor person. Oh, don't worry about the food, though. We're going to give you the same food as everyone else. You see, I was thinking at first to only give you guys some chips and beer I was going to buy at the convenience store, since you were only going to give me one cent as a wedding gift after all. But I changed my mind since I thought that it wouldn't be good since that might ruin the wedding reception's atmosphere. The other guests would feel uncomfortable if these two weirdos were standing in the corner eating chips after all, which means I'll be kind enough and just make you guys stand by the walls. <laughs> First of all, I don't want you to be misunderstood, so I'll have you know that we're going to give you a standard-sized wedding gift. Huh? But how did you get that much money? We are not so poor as to not be able to prepare even that much money. Oh, is that so? Um, Rosa, I honestly don't care that much that you placed us like this, but does your groom know about this seating placement of yours? Because I don't think that he's going to be as uninterested in this as I am. Huh? Why do you ask? I'm the one who invited you guys, so it's my freedom as to how I place you guys at the wedding reception, right? My groom has nothing to do with this. <laughs> What are you talking about? What do you mean that you're the one who invited us? But didn't I already tell you that I got two invitations and that I would be replying to the one that invited both me and my husband? Don't tell me, but do you seriously not know who invited us? It was your groom that invited me and your husband. What? Oh, that's right. What do you mean, that's right? Did you not see the guest list? You looked at the guest list and then came up with this seating placement, right? Uh, what? Oh, I guess it did say something like that on the guest list. It looks like you weren't listening to me either when I told you that I would delete the wedding invitation I received from you and reply to the one your husband sent us instead. Um... If this was just me involved, I wouldn't even bother making a commotion out of this and just go home already. But this is just going a bit too far. Actually, I think this is going way too far. What in the world are you talking about? What, do you think my groom is going to get mad about this or something? Why would he get mad? You guys are just some random colleagues of his that he probably just invited as a courtesy. Do you seriously not know the relationship between your groom and me and my husband? We're not just some random colleagues. What? But I thought that you guys just worked at the same company, right? You guys were in the category of colleagues. Well, yeah, I guess we are his colleagues, but it's really more than that. First of all, I'm the CEO of the company your groom works at as a senior executive manager. What? You're the CEO? That doesn't make any sense. You see, my great-grandfather was the one who founded this company. I inherited it one year ago, and I'm currently its fourth CEO. My husband, by the way, is the company's vice president. Huh? No way. You've got to be kidding right now. But... The company my husband works at is one of the largest in its field. There's no way someone as poor as you is actually the great-granddaughter of its founder and also the current CEO. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, your father was just a regular employee, right? Why would a CEO be living in a tiny 2DK apartment like that anyways? Um, no. My father was already the CEO when we used to live near each other. Like I already said, just because someone doesn't live in a luxurious house doesn't mean that they're poor. What? I already told you, we only lived in that 2DK apartment since my father was about to inherit his parents' house, and we were planning on moving there soon. You didn't tell me anything about this. Um, I think I did. Several times, actually. 
Even your parents knew about this. Whatever I said to you, you kept calling me poor for some reason, so eventually I just got tired of explaining it to you. Besides, I didn't like how you kept boasting about your parents' jobs, since it felt like you were making fun of people who worked in different fields. Huh? What even is that? Oh, and there's one more thing I need to tell you. What is it? Did you know that my company is the largest trading partner of your father's company? What? Really? I seriously don't know how you've been able to live your life until now not knowing any of this, when both your father and your groom have ties with our company. Actually, I guess it isn't that surprising, though. Knowing you, you probably just ignored what everyone else told you so that you could continue living in the reality you made up in your head. Anyways, I heard that you managed to make our seating arrangements like this by lying to the planners this morning, right before the wedding ceremony started, about who we actually were, and basically forced them to change the seating arrangements that were already decided as we were your groom's guests. Yeah, but don't you think it's only natural to assume that someone is poor if they live in a tiny 2DK apartment like that? Not if that person told you several times that that wasn't actually the case. You messed up big time, Rosa. For your groom, my husband and I are his superiors as the CEO and vice president of the company he works at. And as for your father, we are the heads of his company's most important trading partners. And you insulted us like this by making us stand by the walls because you refused to believe what I told you. Not that this would be okay even if we were actually poor. What? Well, that's it from me. I was able to find out your intentions behind this seating arrangement you came up with, so I think I'll leave it to your groom and parents now, because I, for one, am honestly just glad that I have an excuse to go home. What? Me and my husband are guests of your groom, so they're probably going to check the seats of your groom's guests first. Wait, what? Well then, me and my husband are going to go home now. No, why are you going to go home? But if you go home now, this is just going to make what I did look even worse. Um, but I heard that your groom is already talking about canceling the wedding ceremony. He's going to cancel it? Goodbye then. Wait, don't go! <phone rings> Cecira, what am I going to do about this? My marriage with my fiancé was canceled and my parents got so furious with me that they basically cut ties with me and kicked me out of their house. Not only that, but they're making me pay for a bunch of stuff, including an alimony and the wedding ceremony's cancellation fees, and apparently I have to pay a total of over a hundred thousand euros. I'm the daughter of a CEO, but now I have to get a job? I didn't even do anything wrong. It was just a simple misunderstanding. I didn't know you and your husband were the CEO and the vice CEO of my husband's company. I get why everyone's mad at me, but don't you think that canceling the marriage over a simple misunderstanding is going a bit too far? I don't think that this is something serious enough for my parents to cut ties with me like that either. Besides, this is kind of your fault anyways. The only reason I thought that you were poor in the first place was because your family lived in a tiny 2DK apartment. You're partly responsible for this mess, so I think that you have a duty to help me out now, you know? Cecira? Hey, Cecira! Reply to my texts! I was eating lunch when Rosa suddenly sent me this wall of text, and I couldn't stand all the notifications, so I eventually just blocked her account. She doesn't know my current address, so I'm not worried about her trying to come to our house and do anything crazy. But I am worried that she might attempt to break into our office and make a scene, since not only was I there, but her ex-fiancé, the senior executive manager, was also. We were half expecting her to barge in at any moment, and it looks like my guess was correct. Of course, we already expected this to happen, so as soon as she tried to barge in, some of the staff pretended to welcome her and led her to the meeting room, giving her some tea and snacks as a distraction. Behind her back, though, we contacted her parents. Rosa jumped in shock when she saw her parents enter the meeting room, and she was taken away before she could even realize what was happening. Apparently, she was sent to work at a construction company famous for turning even the most wretched of society's degenerates into upstanding citizens. She now does grueling work, which is also the first kind of work she's ever done in her life. Under the constant watch of her superiors, working day and night to pay off the over 100,000 euros of money she owes. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.